how to overcome imposter syndrome, how to overcome imposter syndrome, how to deal with imposter syndrome, how to stop feeling like a fraud. That is what we're going to talk about today. But first, ah, oh, if you're new to this channel, I begin each video by inhaling the validation that comes from people who watch my videos. And I get that validation in the form of subscribing to the YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Please also hit that little notification bell so that you can get new videos the nanosecond they come out. All other platforms, please like, comment, subscribe, share, tell everybody you know about the videos that I share. Okay, how to deal with imposter syndrome. This is actually a topic that's near and dear to my heart because I actually gave a TEDx talk about the uh, topic of imposter syndrome about a couple years ago. And the funniest thing is when I was giving that talk, I felt like a total fraud the entire time. A little bit of backstory on how I ended up giving a TEDx talk. I was in a local speech club called Toastmasters. And you know, I've always been a decent, pretty good, kind of naturally talented speaker. And at the time I'd been in the club for about six months. One of the members of the club let me know that there was a local event and you could go to this event and pitch your ideas to be a part of the local TEDx conference. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, what do I really know at this point to feel like I'm even some credible public speaker that should be on the TEDx stage, talking in front of a thousand people, giving a talk, what should I pitch? I have six months of speaking experience. I'm barely a novice. What right do I have to give a talk at a TEDx conference? The perfect subject for someone who doesn't feel like they have enough credentials to be on the TEDx stage would be to talk about imposter syndrome, right? So that's what I did. And one of the tips that I'll elaborate on a little bit further down the road in this video is the way to overcome your feelings of being a fraud, of being an imposter, is almost always to just dive into whatever you're doing in spite of the feeling. You are not really going to be able to totally mitigate or avoid the feeling of being a fraud, the feeling like you don't have enough experience or credentials or talent or know-how, you just don't feel like you have enough credibility points to do the things that you really wanna do in your life. And the way to cure that is going to be to do it anyways. So in the talk, one of the main things that I focused on was the idea that many of the most lucrative, the most opportunistic, the most opportunities that you have right now in this digital age where essentially anyone can turn on a camera, anyone can put up a blog post, anyone can start a company for little to no money, anyone can kind of learn and share their knowledge on anything at any time. The best routes in life are going to be the ones where you feel like a fraud. The number one direction you should be moving towards is the things that make you feel like you're not worthy enough to do it. Kamal Ravikant, a person that I follow, has a saying, and he said, if I did only what I was qualified to do, I'd be a janitor with a broom sweeping up a floor somewhere. And that's when you think about it, think about the things that you're really qualified to do. A lot of you have jobs that you don't like, but you're qualified to do them. When you go to college, you get a certain degree in a certain narrow field and you're quote unquote qualified to do it. Although I'd argue that, you know, not all college degrees make you qualified and credible. But the more certain you are of your expertise, often the less opportunity there's gonna be in that field. So in the TEDx talk, I talked about the fact 
that the future is going to belong to the imposters. That's actually the name of the talk. I'll link to it below. The future is going to belong to the imposters because the people who are willing to step into areas where the terrain is undefined, where the credibility isn't perfectly established and you have to go into that field without the perfect resume, perfect CV, perfect LinkedIn profile, those are where the opportunities are. And I even lended credibility to the fact that in the past, going the safe and certain route actually might have been the better thing to do. First of all, it was much more risky to try something alternative. You needed a bunch of capital to start a business. You needed to pitch your book to a hundred editors just to maybe get it picked up and published. If you weren't on one of the top three TV stations because there only were three, you weren't gonna get any press or any airtime, right? So kind of these more outlandish dreams where the gatekeepers were really more intact and where there really was a group of people who decided who was credible and who wasn't, the route of certainty actually made more sense. Going to your nine to five made more sense. You know, the average person could support their whole family working at a corporation or working in the factory back in the day, but that is not the way things are right now. Look at the way the landscape is trending. Things are getting automated. You have artificial intelligence doing things that are predictable and certain. So there's number one, the more predictable and certain the path you're taking, the more replaceable you are, the easier to replace you will become and you will get replaced. Um, that's a whole nother tangent for a whole nother video that I want to talk about, but there is going to be a division where the people who are kind of multifaceted and multi-skilled and venture into these routes where they might not necessarily feel like they have the most credibility up front, it's gonna go really, 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 really well for them. And the people who are kind of locked into certainty in the traditional models, unfortunately, those models are gonna go away. Those jobs are gonna go away. Those pathways are gonna go away and the upside is gonna decrease while the downside is gonna decrease. I digress. Let's get back to the topic of how to deal with imposter syndrome and how to stop feeling like a fraud. Like I mentioned before, you don't wanna stop feeling like a fraud. You will wanna to work to alleviate those feelings in the future, but you have to understand the more you feel like a fraud, the more that you are afraid of something, the more likely it is that that is what you should be doing. In the War of Art, Stephen Pressfield says, if you find yourself asking yourself, am I really a writer? Am I really a painter? Am I really an entrepreneur? Chances are you are. The counterfeit innovator is wildly self-confident. The real innovator is scared to death. The counterfeit innovator is wildly confident. The real one is scared to death. So you have to know that moving in the direction of your fears is the direction that you want to be going in. And like I've said in so many other videos, if you're new to this channel, a recurring theme of the videos is that no kind of self-help guru or YouTuber or author can give you what you need to fill the gap between your thought and your action. There's no perfect formula for doing what you're afraid of other than you kind of sort of have to do it. And just understand that if you're afraid of something, you are moving closer in the direction of your dreams. I was scared when I gave that talk. I was petrified before I gave that talk. But the minute after I completed it, it was one of the best feelings of my life. I liked writing. I thought I was good at writing, but I didn't consider myself the ultimate authority on writing. So I practiced, got better, and took different steps to be able to do things like publish books. And every time I put myself out there a little bit more, same thing I'm doing with YouTube. Who am I to be doing a YouTube channel? I'm gonna dive in anyway. Just dive in anyway. Feel the fear and do it anyway, and then good things will happen. But as far as the actual process, if we're gonna get into brass tacks about how to overcome your feelings of being imposter, really, you wanna work on simply being slightly ahead of the people that you're trying to help, 
the people that you're trying to teach, the organization you wanna be a part of, the business you wanna start. You have to know that when you're gonna be dealing with other people or putting yourself out there, the only thing that you really have to do to be able to establish credibility in their eyes is to be helpful to them, to be one step ahead of them. If you are able to help somebody figure out something that you know how to do that they first didn't know how to do, you're the expert to them, regardless of how much of an expert you feel like yourself. So this is kind of the way that I got into the whole personal development game in the first place. You know, a lot of people, they come into the self-help industry and basically they do the same thing that everyone else does. They kind of give you, you know, top 10 tips for success. They give you bland, homogenized advice where they try to sound like everyone else. And essentially they try to act like they live this perfect life and they kind of speak to you from a pedestal and they talk down to you. And what helped me become successful was really solving my own problems first and then writing about it. That's how I just established my credibility as a self-help writer because mind you, when I first started getting into self-help in the initial moments where I started writing self-help, my life was not good. I've told you the story before where I was dead broke and depressed. And then I started watching self-help content, watching YouTube videos. And then I got the job at a video store making $10 an hour and I used that responsibility to start learning about self-improvement. Self and then I got an opportunity to write. So in the beginning, I didn't write blog posts that were titled, here's my master routine to success because I'm a millionaire. No, I wasn't. I would simply just talk about things that I was learning. Oftentimes I would read a book and I would write a blog post that was kind of just a book review on that. And I would go over some of the insights I got from the book and kind of leave people with some parting thoughts. I was reading a lot at the time. I was just chewing through self-improvement books. And what I would do is I would read these books on self-improvement, psychology, philosophy, and then I would say, okay, how am I improving my own life with this? And then I would kind of improve my life with this, kind of feeling a little bit fake about sharing the information with others, but still just kind of like staying a step ahead, step ahead, just like solving my own problems, writing about it, sharing it with you. And that's the process I've pretty much done through my entire kind of cycle here is just staying a little bit ahead. And then to make myself feel more credible, I would just try to create like all of these different loops of credibility that would make myself feel better and make me feel more credible to talk about other things. So in the beginning, I was more or less like solving my own problems. I was just getting more productive. I was waking up earlier and doing the things that I needed to do outside of my job. I was reading a lot. I was watching a lot of videos. And then I understood that the only difference between people who share content like this is their personality. So I would essentially write and then I would start to tell stories of how I fucked up my life and then I would just talk about how I fixed it. So I'd be like, okay, I screwed up my life. I kind of read about these tips that helped me fix it. Then I fixed it. Now here's what I did and here's what you can do. And then I started taking different self-improvement steps to make me feel more credi credibility or more credible in terms of my own self-improvement. So I went from working at the video store to getting a higher paying job where I was a director of marketing at a digital marketing company. So I was ascending in my own career. So I went from video store to digital marketing director. So then that made me credible in talking about how to level up to a career that's more suitable and higher paying because you know I did like that job even though my ultimate dream was becoming a writer, I still talked about the different ways that I was leveling up. I started practicing my public speaking skills. And then that gave me another thing to talk about, how to become more confident. And then about two years, two or three years into writing and building my writing about the idea of self-improvement and the things that I improved in myself, I started coaching other writers. So you see how these credibility loops tend to happen. First, I became more credible just in the sense of self-improvement. And then since I had three years of writing experience, I started writing about writing. So I realized in the process of 
building up a writing career, there's just a bunch of things that aspiring writers need to know. They need to know how to write a headline. They need to know how to write an introduction. They need to know how to write subheadings. They need to know how to communicate with the reader. They need to know how to do research on what people are interested in learning about or being shared with via writing. I learned about how to put together websites, how to put together an email lists, how to put together SEO and all this stuff. So that same loop fueled my writing coaching kind of aspect of my business. I basically looked back and I was like, okay, what were all of the things that I struggled with when it came to building up my writing career? Then I just started writing blog posts about those. And then I started taking on clients who I would help who were basically me three years ago. See, I was f three full years ahead of people before I decided to even start coaching that. You don't even necessarily have to be that far ahead, but just do it at a level that makes you feel comfortable with being able to either share information or, you know, work at a company. So like if this, you know, we'll take it away from the entrepreneurship space and let's say that you're just wanting to work at a new job or in a different industry where you don't feel credible. Well, do things to make yourself feel credible. Go volunteer in some capacity if that's something you can do. Find 10 people who are in the career you want, interview them and post a blog about it on LinkedIn. That'll show social proof. That'll show that you're learning about the industry. Document what you're doing. Shoot videos about your career. Post that on LinkedIn. Do blog posts about what you're learning in your new career studying do that there's all different ways to demonstrate credibility and that's kind of what the new game is going to be in 2019 and beyond you know some people still require you to get degrees you know quote unquote markers of credibility you know gotta get your linkedin profile set up but look at some of the top companies in the world google no longer ask for college degrees, neither does Facebook, neither does Microsoft, neither do any of the big companies in Silicon Valley. You know, often a lot of people get hired at places like Google, like Google just goes in and they just poach people right out of high school. They look and you know, they say, oh, you're really good at doing this. Like I remember saw, seeing some interviews from this kid who basically was really good at like this complicated video game that just required a lot of technical knowledge to understand. And then a senior employee at Google was somebody who also played that same game. And so they look at this top ranked kid and who he was like, Oh yeah, he knows how to do this complicated stuff. I bet he could work at Google. So that's just an example of just putting yourself out there, demonstrate your capability. It's as easy as opening up a Word document, firing it up on LinkedIn or Medium or a WordPress blog. It's as easy as opening up your phone and shooting up videos. Notice the camera quality is better in this video now, but what did I start this channel with? I started this channel with a webcam built into my laptop, crappy lighting. Sometimes you look at, go look at some of my old videos. You can barely see me because the lighting is so bad and I didn't know what I was doing, but I just dove in and I wanted to get the message out there and I gained momentum. Now the video quality is getting a little bit better. I'm becoming more quote unquote, a professional YouTuber. But I've understood something, you know, kind of way back to those days where I just started writing and started giving speeches after only having six months of experience and all that. You just got to dive in. The experience and the knowledge will come, but you have to dive in first. And credibility is in the eye of the beholder. You don't understand that the people that you're working with or the audience that you want to have or the tribe that you want to serve they are even further behind than you. Some things might be obvious to you that are not obvious to them at all. Trust me, I often get, you know, requests from writers for advice and I just kind of like rattle off stuff that just seems like very, very, very basic in my mind. And they are like mind blown by what I know. So as you continue to accumulate experience, you will be able to have a second nature level of knowledge that you will then be able to share with other people and you will get all the results in the world that you want. You know, I'm not big on numbers, but you know, I went from zero views a month to over half a million views a month on my writing. I don't have a degree in writing. I don't have a master's. I don't have an MFA in writing, 
Hell, my grammar on some of my writing isn't really even that stellar. I'm not really a stickler for grammar. I just understood that the medium, the message is really what mattered to me. And I was like, all right, I have some things that I wanna say. I'll become a better structural, technical writer later on. I have some things that I wanna say via video. I'll become a better structural, lighting, technical video editing genius whiz down the road. I knew I didn't need that. I now have come to the point in my life where I've started so many different little side projects and hobbies that I quote unquote had no business doing that I realized the idea of credibility is pretty much a myth altogether. We're all kind of, you know, just walking around in this life. Does anybody really know what they're doing? Does anybody really know what they're doing? Is there really some objective absolute marker of credibility out there? Absolutely not. These markers of credibility, you know, college, degrees, first of all, they're not even directly correlated to how much knowledge you have. Getting a credential does not prove that you have knowledge in anything. There's no causal relationship between a credential and having real knowledge. And there are often people who have real knowledge and who don't have credentials. What I'm trying to tell you that in terms of overcoming your imposter syndrome, don't lean into it. You should never feel like you are all the way credible and confident. You should never feel like you know everything as soon is you stop feeling like an imposter. As soon as you stop feeling like a fraud, as soon as you think that you have everything figured out, that's when you are in a position to fail. It's often the people who think they know the most who tend to be the unhappiest. And it's also the people who think they know the most who tend to be blindsided when change happens. You know, you think you know certain something about your industry and then you just think you're credible. You don't continue to learn. You don't continue to evolve. You don't adopt beginner's mind and try to, you know, stay a student for the rest of your life. And then all of a sudden you don't see when changes are coming. Look at many people who've gotten laid off. There are a bunch of mid-level managers all across America over the past decades who could tell you that they felt very, very credible and certain about what they were capable of moments before they got laid off and sent into a much more destitute version of living than they were accustomed to because they did not stay on their toes. You have to stay your you have to stay on your toes at all times. There's no break. I don't you know the funny thing about the funny thing about all of this, it just it just ties into this idea of we just, we want finality so bad. We want to like arrive at this point of credibility so bad. We wanna arrive at this point of status so bad. We wanna arrive at this certain level of income and passion and purpose and relationships. Like, what, why are you trying to stop? What, why are you trying to level off and feel comfortable for what? What are you gonna do after that? What are you gonna do after you reach this perfect level? Just die? Isn't the point to evolve? Isn't the point to increase your level of knowledge and to always be on the edge of what you know? Because the funny thing is the more that you learn, the more you understand you don't know jack shit. It's so funny, like I'm just learning so many different new things about, like I'm running a business now, you know, I have revenue and I just hired in a full-time accountant and I have lawyers and I got to set up business bank accounts and I'm learning all these tax laws that I have no idea even existed before and I'm learning how to structure a business and form it and I have a business coach and assistants and people running ads and I'm trying all these, dude, I don't feel, I don't feel, I don't feel credible at all. I feel like in over my head isn't the right phrase because I'm very confident that I'll figure it out. But there's just kind of a lot to deal with and there's a lot of new things to learn. And yeah, there can be doubt in there. You know, I still I still have feelings of imposter syndrome. I still feel doubt, but I'm a beast now. Like it, it gets better. I talk about that in all my videos. Like I'm a beast, like look in my eyes, I'm confident. 
and that comes from having experience and you will get there you will become much more confident than you are right now the ghost of imposter syndrome won't go away but you'll level up so much more than you think you're capable of and you're gonna watch my videos are gonna keep getting more credible credible year after year day after day i'm gonna be around you know if i live i'm gonna be around for the next decade so stay tuned and then at that 10 year point where i have grown this channel to an amazing height i'm gonna find some new project that scares the shit out of me and that i feel like i have no business doing and that i lack enough credible knowledge in because when you start to do that you realize that's the game that's what you want to be doing in the first place you don't want comfort you want to constantly feel uncomfortable because you know that you're alive when you struggle and when you strive you know that you're alive okay that's all i have on the topic of imposter syndrome for today please if you haven't already buy the book u2.0 buying my books is what helps me have the bandwidth to create free content for you. So if you want me to get better lighting, better videos, more credible and professional content, get the book, help support. Okay, if you're on YouTube, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so that you get more videos. Also, look below. There's tons of links to other content below. I have different social media channels where I shoot behind the scenes stuff so you can see how I'm working. Matter of fact, if you go on my Instagram, You'll often see me creating the videos behind the scenes and some of the things that I'm doing. So if you're looking to tap into my brain into different ways, check out my socials. <sighs> Thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video and giving me validation. And while you're here, since you made it to the end, you might as well go watch another video. See you on the next one.